Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over how to use the force versus displacement graph to determine the amount of work that a force does. Now, this video is example number one. The next video will be example number two. It'll be a little bit more complicated example. But for now, we're going to go over example number one, and we're going to determine the amount of work that is done by a variable force using the force versus displacement graph. Now, let me just point out that here on the y-axis, we have the force measured in newtons. Here on the x-axis, we have the displacement. This is not time. This is not force versus time. This is force versus displacement, force versus the distance that the object moves. And you can see the x-axis is measured in meters, the y-axis is measured in newtons. And let's just look at the graph first. You will notice that for the first five, six, seven, eight meters of displacement, the force is constant at 40 newtons. And then from eight, nine, 10, 11, the force decreases from 40 newtons to zero. And you should know that the area under the force versus displacement graph is equal to the amount of work done on the object by a force. So that's the area under the curve. And what we mean by the area under the curve is the area between the curve and the x-axis. That tells us how much work the force does. So we need to figure out the area under this curve right here. And you can see we basically have two shapes. We have a rectangle and we have a triangle. It's pretty easy to determine the area of a rectangle and it's pretty easy to determine the area of a triangle. We just add them up and then we get the amount of work that is done by that force. Now, I'm just gonna show you quickly why or how the area on the curve equals the force and I'm going, excuse me, the amount of work done. And I do that first for this yellow section. It is a rectangle. The area of the rectangle is the height times the base. And you can see that the height is measured in newtons. The base is measured in meters. And that means we're just going to take the newtons times the meter, and a newton times a meter is, area, is equal to a joule, and a joule is the units for work. Okay, so I'm just kind of proving to you or showing you that the area actually does equal the amount of work done because it comes out in joules. Now, let's just go through and do it for those two. The first one is the yellow area. The yellow area is a rectangle and it's the base times the height. That means the area is, the area is equal to the work. The work is equal to 40 newtons. This side is the height. This says base times height. That's usually how we say the area of a rectangle. I'm gonna do the height times the base because in newton meters it looks a little better as when we do the units, but of course, orders of operation for multiplication, it does not matter. So one side of this rectangle has a length of 40 newtons, so to speak. The other side of this ring rectangle has a length of eight meters. So it's just 40 newtons times eight meters, just the area under the curve, you have to include the units. Eight times four is 32, 40 times eight is 320. That means during the first eight meters of displacement, this force does 320 joules of work. Now let's do the triangle. We know that the area under a triangle is one half the base times the height. Not just the base times the height, but one half the base times the height. That means the work is equal to one half, the base is one, two, three, three meters. The height again is 40 newtons. One half, three times four, three times four is 12, 40 times three is 120 times one half. It's going to be equal to 60, and of course, it's a newton meter. Newton times a meter is a joule, and that means that during the last three meters from eight, nine, 10, and 11, that that force, even though the force is decreasing, the force does 60 joules of work. Now, what is the total work done? Simply add the two together. 320 times 60 is 380 joules. Okay, that's all there is to it. That is the total amount of work done by that variable force. Simply calculate the area under each section of the curve or the area under the curve, on area under the, the line, the area between the line and the 
x-axis and you will have the total amount of work done. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave me a positive comment in the comment section below, a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.